morning, we're going to continue our series, Not Alone. So we started this series then uh, three Sundays ago now, two Sundays ago now, uh, about Not Alone. That it is better that we are together. Do you guys remember those moments that we had in that message? We said to each other, we said, I need you and you need me. Yes. And I remember this a certain thing that happened right when we said that. We said, who said, you need me, and we all said that with a whole bunch of more, more gusto, like, you need me, and I need you too, kind of, maybe, right? We weren't quite convinced that, and I'm praying that as we continue in this series, that we can say, you need me, and I need you, with the same kind of, and the same emphasis on both sides of that, because it's important. God didn't make us of believers, he didn't set us as believers all to our own selves. He called us into a family. He called us into a community. He called us to be together because he knows that we can accomplish more for his kingdom. We can accomplish more. We can look more like him when we're together. And so I uh, was thinking about this aspect of not alone and thinking about, okay, why, why is this difficult? And I was thinking about the season that we just left. Actually, now I got this kind of... I don't know what kind of season we're having now, right? It's spring or summer. I don't think it's quite made up its mind. But in the in the middle of winter, one of the most difficult things for me ever is walking on ice. Anybody else like walking? Walk? Ice gets out, and it's like a terrible thing. And and it really does a hard thing for my heart sometimes. Because every once in a while, I slip on the ice. Nobody else slips on the ice. There's a few people saying, yeah, I slip on the ice too, right? Okay. All right. So when I'm walking, you know, you're walking, walking in the crowd or walking, and there's ice around, and all of a sudden you slip. And what's your first reaction? <laughs> I hope nobody saw me, right? <laughs> Try to know it. He's like, yeah. You're like, I hope nobody saw me. We, I don't know about you guys, but when I make mistakes, I hate feeling like I've been exposed. Like all of a sudden, like, you know, everybody in the world has slipped on ice before, but all of a sudden when you slip on ice, it's like this terrible thing. Like, oh no, everybody's going to see me. Man, I, I hate it even, I, I've been at work sometimes. <laughs> and you got your supervisor comes and he's talking about something that needs to be corrected, right? And as he's talking about it and he's like uh, making these statements and you're, you, all of a sudden you realize you were the one that did exactly what he's trying to correct. And a few other people have been there too, right? And, and, and it's those moments, all of a sudden, you get, you get tense, you tense up, you know, I hate being exposed whenever I make mistakes. It's awkward, right? It's an uncomfortable situation you, you get yourself in. And, and this is why so often as believers, I feel we isolate ourselves, right? All of a sudden, I, if I'm alone, Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody knows how I'm struggling. Nobody knows. And in and, and some way, we find more comfort in isolating ourselves. Oh, because if I get around the people, then they're going to hear how I talk. They're going to see how I act. They're going to see these things. And it's awkward, because sometimes I slip up. Anybody else slip up? Everyone, oh, well, yeah. Right? I slip up. I make a mistake. Or I, I know I don't quite live up. Just, and so it would be much better if I just isolate myself. I just hit myself. Man. I think about this when I'm inviting people over to my house. You know, like I'm drained sometimes. I got, you know, group in my house. Like my house is a mess. I don't want to show everybody my mess. And they're gonna know I don't know how to clean up on a on a regular basis. Or I I I am I just at the confession morning, nobody I think I see a few people saying yes, right? It's easier to do life alone than to invite people in. Yes. Any of the married folk in the, in the house say amen, right? Yes. Right? It's easy. It would be easier if I just did my own thing, did what I want, did my own thing. Nobody knows. But maybe the most Christ-like thing to do is to invite people into our house, invite people into our life, so that we would be exposed and that others can see that. And when we as a church, when we as a body of Christ are committed to, make, to making ourselves look more like Christ and helping others look more like Christ, it can actually be something that brings healing and restoration instead of the judgment and awkwardness. I know we've got a long ways to go before we get to that really saying yes and amen to that, right? But, but when we are committed to looking more like Christ and we're committed to helping others look more like Christ, then exposure becomes our best friend because we recognize that exposure is what helps us look more like Christ. It can't be dealt with unless it's exposed, unless things come into the light. Jesus actually calls us into a life of exposure so that we, so that He can restore us. 
Let's look at this. John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 16. We've got that one memorized. Of the, you know, as a kid, that was one of the ones I got a candy bar for, right? And, you know, memorize John chapter 16. But right, following that passage, saying that we are not condemned, right? He didn't come in this world to condemn us. <coughs> No, he came so that anybody who believed on his name, they'll be saved, right? And in verse 19, it says this. And this is the judgment. This is, this is where there may be, there, this is where judgment, this is where there may be condemnation. This is the judgment that's, that's brought. Is this. The light, Jesus, has come into the world. And the people that love the darkness rather than the light because of their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Y'all, Jesus is calling us to love the light, to love the exposure. And sometimes I'm like, I'm like Andrew, you've been... You're supposed to be building us up and, and encouraging us to be with one another. And now you tell me if I'm with you, then all I want to do is get exposed. And I can say, yes, and it's going to be good for you, and it's going to be good for me. It's going to be good for us because we're going to look more like Jesus when we allow ourselves to get exposed. Some of us have to admit, like I got like like this week for me, and I said, you know what? I would love to be in the dark right now and do the dark thing instead of the light thing. Like, it would be easier for me if I just didn't do what I know I need to do. But we are chasing the light so that we can be exposed. I don't know about you, but I want my wrong thinking to be exposed. I want my wrong beliefs to be exposed. I want my wrong acting to be exposed because in, my, in the depths of who I am, and I believe in the depths of who you are, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus exalted. We want to see others come in contact with Jesus more than ourselves. And this is the life that Christ calls us to. That we may be built up in Him in all of our, in all of our thinking, in all of our beliefs, in all of our acting. Anybody excited about that? This is hard. I guess it's more hard than I thought it was going to be. But it's good. Because, you know, because we believe two weeks ago, we said it's better that Two, uh, sorry, we said that, it's, that two are better than one, then if we believe that two are better than one, and we believe that we want to be exposed, then this, then our family is not a place of judgment, but of restoration. So this goes hand in hand with the first message. The first message said that two are better than one. We can accomplish more, we can do more, we can stay warm together. If one falls, it can be picked up. See, if, if we truly believe that two are better than one, then when we desire to be isolated, we actually change it. We say, we desire to be connected because I know that when I'm connected with others, I'll be restored. I won't be judged. And we've got to get that and as a family. I pray that that would be our, our mode of operation, that, hey, we aren't a family that judges. We are a family that restores. So when things are exposed about me or exposed about you, it's not time to get on Gossip Central. It's not a time to beat up or, or hit down. No, it's a time to say, guess what? I, I see that thing in you that is not like Christ. Let us look at Christ. Let us study Christ. Let us believe on His truth so that we are built up and restored in Him. And that's the goal of exposure. The goal of exposure is Remember those moments, man, that awkward, oh, that somebody just saw me slip up. No, it's, wow, that, what an opportunity now for me to see Christ for who He is, and then I would grow into Him. Two are better than one when exposure happens. Judgment is not passed, but restoration is celebrated. Man, if you're still judging others, then you're still in the dark. That's where, the, that's, that's where judgment happens. That's where condemnation exists. It's outside of Christ, outside of the light is where judgment exists. But exposure in light, when it's brought into our life, it brings restoration. Don't be of the dark. Don't, God calls us to himself to bring exposure so that restoration can happen. 
And there's three environments here as a church body that we can be a part of so that restoration can happen when we are exposed. I, I believe this wholeheartedly. We are not alone. We are meant to do this together. And so the first environment that we're going to talk about and think about how we can use this so that exposure brings restoration is in the environment of life on life. Anybody like just hanging out? And that's my favorite thing to do. I love game nights. I love, man, the World Cup is playing. Get together with some friends. Go fishing. Yesterday, yesterday, me and Brittany were out in the, uh, in the parking lot. We were fixing breaks. Man, I love those moments when I just get to be with somebody, hang out, do some things, and, and get to know one another. And, and this is exactly what Jesus did when he called his disciples to come and follow him. They, they lived life together. Recognize that? Like, like they were eating together, they were traveling together, they slept together, like they were, they were in a unit, they were always together. Then when Jesus calls us into his life, he calls us to live life with one another. Jesus hung out with those he called on a regular basis, and it produced some exposure. All of a sudden, they saw Jesus and how he lived and what he did, and how he honored God in everyday stuff of life. When we're committed to not being alone, we understand that others around us are committed to bringing gospel restoration into our, our life. And this is the invitation that we have when we're saying, hey, we're not living a life isolated, we're living a life that, that you get to see me. That, hey, you know what, when Beth needs a grocery store, grocery store shopping, man, we, I could go grocery store, store shopping I'm a little bit. But with that, right? Like, man, doing lunch together, one of my favorite things about living in an apartment, maybe it's my favorite and my worst thing, <coughs> is we don't have a washer dryer in our house. There's another way that we would, I would love to maybe have a little bit more isolation in my life, but uh, on the other side of things, man, I get to go down to the laundry mat and get to meet other people and be with other people. Life on life. That, and in those moments, we know each other, and we can see each other. And what would it look like as a church, as a body of Christ, if we're committed to live life one another, live life together? Man, we, we mentioned, I mentioned this over and over again, but I, I, I mean it. We all eat three meals a day. I mean, there's many opportunities for us to get together. Man, car, working on cars, all these simple things that we think are unspiritual, they're just ordinary things that can actually produce really spiritual, God-ordained moments for us to encourage one another and lift one another up. Did you guys see that? Man, Jesus lived with his disciples. And he did so that when, as they were exposed and as they lived life together, man, now restoration can happen. When we're together, the layers that we cover ourselves with get pulled back. She has a good up. And we can't do that alone. And I love seeing all you guys beautiful faces, smiling here every Sunday morning, but I don't know who you are. As we live life together, all of a sudden, the layers in which we kind of choose to cover ourselves with, the, the reason why we like to isolate ourselves, and we don't really want people to know who we really are, they, they start to get exposed. And I love this with Denver. It's so fun. Because the Denver, as a little kid, you know, there's, there's moments where he like, okay, he, he got everything together, and then like, then like, there's something that Denver does, and it just shows what he's really thinking, right? And, and he, it, we cannot, as individuals, we cannot perform 100% of the time. So when we live life, our life together, all of a sudden those ugly parts of us begin to show in our daily life. And how annoyed we get at this situation or that situation. How, how much patience we uh, lack or all of a sudden come out when we're doing the brakes and that stinking bolt was rusted, like shut, you know? It, it shows a little unchrist like this when I'm trying to yank the bolt off and, and, not, and then I hit my finger on the thing and little bloody knuckles, little... Man, living life together allows ourselves this is a good thing, guys. I promise. It's a good thing. Living life together allows us to be exposed. And we're ex when we're exposed, we can just celebrate because then we say, wow, in a moment for us to look more like Jesus. 
Come on, we've got to celebrate the conviction. It celebrate the exposure. When we're alone, our main objective is usually, I don't want to be exposed. I want to be hidden. We have to be able to get close. Because when we are seen, when we are seen, then we're known. Right? Then we're known. And we know what each other's like. We know who we are. When we, when we are seen, then, man, we're able to encourage one another and lift one another up and know each other's needs. Man, it takes a lot. When I was a missionary, learning how to accept, uh, accept people meeting my needs. Like, it was a big thing when we became missionaries. We had to go around, we had to raise a certain amount of funds, we had to uh, ask for people to support us on a regular basis so that we could do the mission there at Purdue. And it took a while, uh, it took a while for us to be convinced. We went through training, they had to train us how to ask for our needs to be met. You know, to, to actually look needy. And I'm like, that's really hard for me to like put that out. And that same principle goes, goes back here. Man, if we are afraid. I was afraid. I had, a, I had a process through. What am I afraid of? What am I afraid of going to somebody who has what I need and saying, will you pray and ask God to provide for what I am going to do for him, right? And in, in our daily lives, and sometimes we have to get to that point where we can reduce ourselves and be able to say, no, this is who I really am. Because when we are able and willing to get to that point and say, hey, this is who I am, that then restoration and needs can be met in us. Because we're not going, because we've got to convince ourselves, the people that we're going to are committed to me loving Jesus. They're committed to loving Jesus. They're committed to me loving Jesus. We're committed to each other, and now we're in relationship with another. So when I come to them and I say, here's who I really am, I, I can be confident and say they're not going to slap me in the face. They're going to say, no, all right, let's come together. Let's meet this need. Let's encourage you. Let's see you come to full restoration in Christ. And maybe that would be a, a whole message in itself. We need to be ones committed to another person coming to Jesus and, and being full of Jesus. This is what it means to live life on life. Life lived up close in the light so that we are visible and accessible to one another so that Christ's restoration can take place in our lives. Jesus lived with his disciples. He observed what they believed by watching how they lived. They watched each other. They saw each other. They, he knew them intimately. And then he was able to correct, restore, and prompt in them the gospel, the truth of who God is and how their life should look. So it's not only if we're going to be the, do this thing where we're together, we're not alone, we've got to live life together, we've got to know each other, we've got to be willing to let each other into our, our more private <laughs> moments and, and, and into our life so that we can be restored to this. But we also get to live life in community with one another as a group. So man, I, yesterday it was fun. Me and Brian were out there all day long, three hours. Those bolts were rusted, but uh, you know that it wasn't just that. But now it's, we take this a step further, and, and Jesus invites them into the community where it wasn't just Jesus one on one with disciples or one on three with the three that he loved. No, he was with them as a community. Jesus and his disciples experienced life together, and that's why, man, as a church, we have believe firmly in missional communities where we're gathered together where we know each other, we're eating a meal together, we're studying the word together, we're living life on, on different nights together, because this is how Jesus lived it. And they saw, and he and his disciples saw all problems together. We saw this. Jesus, uh, the disciples came to Jesus and said, hey, all these people are hungry, so send them to go away. What was Jesus' response to them? What do you guys have? And he lived, it, he lived it this way with them, and there's time for taxes. Oh, go get, go get the fish, and out of the fish's mouth, you're going you to be able to pay your taxes together. The, the disciples, the early disciples, got this so well that in Acts 2, they were living together in such a way that it said nobody lacked anything. Could you imagine oh, yeah. having that kind of community? And that's a, a community that... 
Christ invites us to is if we're living life together, we know each other, but then we live together as a community and we meet one another's needs. Then we're praying for one another. I mean, it would be cool if every one of us could register and find out if our kidney would be one that would meet uh, the need for Beth's son, Mason. I forgot the name, Mason. Right? I mean, like, that's the type of community that we have, is, is together we meet one another. Together we're going and we're living together. Together we're committed to seeing our lives reflect who Jesus is. Together we're conquering and going up. They said they lacked nothing. They had everything in common. Everything I have is yours. Everything you have is mine. Talk about looking like Jesus. Jesus, who had all things, became nothing. He shared it with us and, and brought with him an inheritance that we have, all that he has. And we sit in the same kind of position that Jesus sits with all things. And that's the type of inheritance. We, said, we lack nothing, right? So in, in a community that we have, we live life on community together. Man, everything you need, somebody mow your grass, man, let me know. I can do that for you. I can... Uh, Change of I got that for you. Hey, study the word together. Oh, pray. You got this. I need that. Man, we got this. Man, you got some financial needs. Hey, what can we do together to bless you so that you would not have to worry about that? What? That's the type of community that we see happening as they live life together. Because when you live life together, then you have a burden of care for one another. You guys ever notice that? People that you're close to, you have a care for? Your family, the ones you're, you're, you're closest to, and you care for them. You know their needs. And life and community, how, it, it gets manifested because now we know each other. We have a heart for one another. We know each other's needs. We've been exposed, and we're celebrating the exposure because, hey, here's another opportunity for us to look like we <coughs> church is the body of Christ and we're made with so many different parts and when we're committed to one another's development to look like Jesus, then life and community happen I need you and you need me we need each other in this so that Christ would be built up we need people who love Jesus around us. I don't know about you. I have enough people that don't love Jesus around me. I need some people that love Jesus to surround me. And, let me and that doesn't mean that I don't have people outside the church that I know and I'm with. Because, hey, there's a missional part that's coming, right? There's, there's, there's a part of my life that we need to be around those that don't know Jesus. But I need some people around me that love Jesus. That are committed to Jesus. And you do too. We need that. Because, man, when we're exposed, we get built up. This cool part of the Bible, of the story of God, is that we play a part in equipping others to look more like Jesus. We get to play that part of culture. Like we mentioned last week, where uh, two weeks ago, where iron sharpens iron, so one man can change the countenance of another. I, I, we need, I need some people around. We need each other. I pray that would get deep inside of us. The last environment, the first one is that we live life on life. We got to know each other. We expose each other. We live life in community so that we can meet each other's needs and we can be exposed to that and we can encourage one another to rise up. But another environment in which we are not alone is in our mission. That Christ brought exposure through our life on mission. Exposing areas of darkness so that areas of darkness can turn to areas of light. We do this in our lives as a body coming together, but then in the world we do this and we're not alone. I, I love opportunities to barbecue and to party with, uh, with people because not only do I get the fellowship that I need as believers coming together, but man, it's a great opportunity for me to invite my unbelieving friends into the group, and then together we're on mission. Life on mission together. And serving the community together. Man, sharing the gospel together.
together. Life on mission. They did this together. Jesus brought the disciples to himself, and they saw in Jesus' model how it was to, to speak the gospel. He modeled what it was to heal the sick. He modeled what it was like to serve people. And then he said, go and do it. And when he said, go and do it, it wasn't just a whole bunch of individuals that he sent out. He sent them out in pairs to go and to minister together. And, and how would that look in our, in our lives? When we have this mission of the world around us, we are not in it alone. If we recognize beforehand that the body of Christ is made of many parts, and so I need you because I need some eyes, I need some hands, I need other people around me that are going to speak to me and encourage me in the ways that they see Christ. On mission, we also need each other for that same reason. Now, I, I have a good friend, but I don't, I don't, I don't speak the same <coughs> language as him. I don't, I don't, I'm not an IT guy. I don't know computers. I, I have some hobbies that we connect over. We connect over soccer. So that was really cool. And but hey, I, I need some of my brothers and sisters in the body that, that can speak the same language as him and can speak into his life the gospel in a way that I can. And so uh, as we recognize and we have an appreciation for others, right, that we are not alone, I'm not isolated, it's not Andrew's job to save the world, it's not, uh, it's not any of your jobs to save the world, no, as a body of Christ we save the world. So if we live life on life, if we live life in community, then on mission we live it together as well. Man, I didn't get to ask for our Jesus about this, but I love the birthday party Thursday night. And I got to meet your neighbor, and I got to meet, uh, again, your friend that we played ultimate frisbee with, but I was like, man, another opportunity where we're just living life together, and we need to live on mission. And there's opportunities that we have to speak to people that don't know Jesus just by the fellowship that we have with one another. This is what Jesus did with his disciples. It's not only an individual call. i got to save my neighborhood. i got to save my workplace. No, man. Use the body of Christ that we have surrounded, that we are surrounded with. We're not alone. Jesus made it clear that, he, that if we follow him, he will make us fishers of men. He demonstrated and they observed and were set out collectively. The community we're a part of is encouraging each other on mission. To take part on mission together. I love that the reminder in scripture and psalms that one can chase a thousand, but do you know how many two can chase? Ten thousand. So together we actually have an exponential influence on those who are around us. Alone I can do so much, but together for the kingdom of God we can do much. Exponentially more together. We're out on mission together. One of us makes a mistake. Man, we've got others around us to encourage us to come back. Say, man, let's do it again. Let's try this attempt. Hey, I saw that. I saw that I was encouraged by your uh, conversation with that individual. Let me encourage you. Hey, maybe you could use this tool in evangelism. You can use this tool to share the gospel. Hey, invite them over to my house. And you know what? They're, they're, I'll make the meal. I'll set up the whole place. Maybe some of you guys are gifted. We talk about the, the body of Christ, how, how does it work together? Some of us are more gifted in hospitality than others, right? I don't know, some of, some of you guys here, maybe you like the, the, get the, like to get the pizzas from the frozen section, you know, at the, at the thing, and that's, that's your hospitality. I'm gonna make you a frozen pizza tonight. And, but others of us in the room, they're like, man, I'll, I'll throw out a full spread of food. You just, you just get the people here. I'll be the, I'll be the host person. You just get the people here, I'll, and, and then, hey, I'm, you may say, I got a neighbor or I have a friend and I'm not a really good conversationalist. Well, man, maybe we need to invite Pastor Bob over. You know, he, 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 he'll, he'll talk with everybody. He'll talk with everybody and then we'll just, we'll just make sure all the people are there, right? And what would it look like if we work together, right? We work together. Or, or in those moments, those moments where we see, uh, we're at the party, and this is what I saw the other day, at the, at the party, I saw somebody sitting alone, and everybody else that was in community was sitting here. Man, what if, what if we just say, hey, come, come and join us in the conversation, right? And maybe we need those, that kind of person, that gatherer person to say, no, I'll just, I'll just get a whole bunch of people. I'm a, I'm a good getter. Does that make sense? I'm a good getter. No, work together on a mission, right? And that, those... Those aspects of who we are, God has created us so that 
that we would be exposed to the light and that would be restored to him. And so let us take advantage of each other's giftedness in this room. Don't live life alone. We're not meant to live it alone. We're meant to live it together. It's going to help us individually come to know Christ more. It's going to help us as a community know Christ more. It's going to help the world because we're going to come together and we're going to say, well, we're on a mission together. I'm not in this alone. Because sometimes whenever I, I feel like it's all up to me, then, then I have a lot of pressure on myself and then I tend not to perform at all, right? That isolation kicks in. Well, I know I can't do everything, so I'm just going to do nothing.
mentorship, when I'm exposed in community, or when I'm exposed on mission, all of it should be celebrated, because I know it's bringing about a restoration to Jesus. Okay. Let me pray over us this morning. Father, Lord, I thank you for your truth that, God, when we believe in you, we are brought into the light. Father, sometimes that's an intimidating thought, because, Father, light brings exposure. It shows us who we really are. It peels back the layers of darkness that we surrounded ourselves with and, and exposes our heart. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we as a church would be ones that are committed to believing that exposure is a good thing and it brings restoration. Father, I pray that it would cause us to have greater unity, a greater sense of commitment to one another, a greater sense of body, a greater sense of family, because, Father Lord, we're saying, yes, I'm willing to be exposed. Yes, God, that's okay. It's better that I be exposed than that I be alone. Father, I pray that that belief would get deep into our heart. Father Lord, it would transform our thinking. And Father Lord, it would enable us to walk more in community. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.